Hello, I'm so glad to be able to spend a few minutes. Thanks again. As we were looking at the book of Revelation, and last Sunday we looked at Revelation 16, but we kind of skipped over 15 because it's this interlude, and it's not talking about the future. But I think it's important for us to just go through it for those who want to understand 15 as well. Starting to read in verse 1, Then I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels who had seven plagues, which are the last, because in them the wrath of God is finished. So that's referring to chapter 16, seven angels, seven plagues coming out of the seven bowls. But while he received that vision, he says, I saw something like a sea of glass mixed with fire and those who were victorious over the beast and his image and the number of his name standing on the sea of glass holding harps of God. And they sang the song of Moses, the bondservant of God and the song of the lamb saying, great and marvelous are your works, Lord God, the almighty, righteous and true are your ways, king of the nations who will not fear you, Lord, and glorify your name. For you alone are holy, for all the nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. As we're looking at this picture, we see this sea of glass that's being described, but there's fire. And in the fire, there, there is this group of people that are holding harps, and they're singing the song of Moses which gives us the idea that they're Jewish um, because it brings that Israel connection. And they're also singing another song, and it's the Song of the Lamb. And um, that's described, and we'll look at that a little bit further. But here we're finding out that, again, it's saying that the wrath of God is finished. And this is why I believe that the church is not on the earth during this time, because the wrath of the church is poured out upon the cross. But this is a wrath against the rebellion of the nations against the Lord. As we're looking at all of this, they have harps. And we're seeing that this sea of glass we had seen before, but there was no fire and the people in it. But now we find out that this sea of glass has these martyrs, those who refuse to receive the mark of the beast and the number that belongs to his name, and that these people have come out of the great tribulation period, and they find themselves before the throne of God singing this expression of worship to the Lord, and they declare the greatness of God, great and marvelous are your works, you're righteous and you're true, and you're king of the nations. So the 144,000 playing their harps, singing before the Lord, are, are joining all the other praises that are being lifted up to the Lord. So we find find out that these, these people are being martyred as a follower of Jesus Christ, but they don't change their testimony, and they're describing in their song the day when God is going to draw all the nations, and every knee is going to bow, and every tongue is going to confess. So if you're asking what happened to the 144,000, they're suffering through the tribulation when they are taken up into the Lord's presence, and they stand in the sea of glass, and the fire around them represents the fire of their persecution. But but they join in their praise and they're aligning themselves with the promises that were given to the Moses and then also the inheritance of the Lamb of God and the bringing of him to all the nations. So that's just a little bit of information right there. And they're just praising the Lord. And as you look at that praise to the Lamb, they're using the exact same words that are used for God. It's a, another proof of the deity of Christ, but it's just a beautiful picture of heaven that we get here.